Just a comment that the chairman did a great job last week. <laughs> Shortest, Thanks, Robert. Shortest meeting. Let the minutes reflect. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you can just still vote the same way okay, that you typically okay. do. All right. Seeing uh, no discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion with a second. All in favor, aye. 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 First item I have for you is a replat. Um, the applicant is requesting a replat of um, some existing lots uh, to turn them to front on what is uh, South Seventh Avenue. Uh, this is the proposed replat. Um, the 22R that you see, um, the lot 22R that ha uh, is at the corner of East Murray and Seventh Avenue, um, there is already an existing structure on this lot. The 21R is a vacant lot. Um, staff did receive an exhibit showing the setbacks and um, where that existing structure lies, and it appears to not create any nonconformities. Um, so staff is um, allowing the replat to proceed with a recommendation of approval. Water and sewer are both um, available in South 7th Avenue. In fact, they are new water and sewer lines. Um, this was, a, I believe, a CIP project, and South 7th has been um, overlaid, and there's curbs over there as well. Uh, the property is owned uh, single-family five, and the, both of these lots do meet the minimum lot size and dimension requirements listed within the SF5 single-family ordinance. Um, staff recommends approval of the request, and I am present for any questions you may have. Move to approve the proposed reply. Second. Uh, I have a motion with a second. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? Item 4B will open the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Item 4B is a, uh, a request for a approval of a replat as well. And this is for the Naomi Ruth edition uh, for property located in the uh, city of Denison's ETJ. Um, the proposed replat is taking two lots and turning them into three, all that have frontage um, on East Texas Street. Um, the approximate number of acres for the parcel, or for the property is uh, almost five, it's 4.899. Um, each of the lots meet the minimum requirements for septic, um, as well as, uh, well, the septic requirements that Grayson County has. Um, and they will be utilizing water from Oak Ridge South Gill. We've received a will serve letter uh, from Oak Ridge for these properties, and then Grayson County will have final approval on the septic. Staff recommends approval of the request, and I am present for any questions you may have. Second. I have a second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Staff updates? I have a couple. Um, so the first update is the Highway Oriented and Corridor Overlay District. A couple of meetings ago, 
we brought through um, just a few amendments to uh, that ordinance pertaining to uses. And we discussed in our PNZ meeting that we might want to be taking a look at that ordinance and um, maybe making some changes ourselves. And how we would like to start the conversation is for you um, as the commission to bring forth your recommendations or any uh, concerns you have uh, related to the ordinance as it as it pertains today um, and if we can discuss that at the next meeting that would be super helpful our overall goal is we'll probably have to obtain more input maybe uh, create a committee um, but we want to make sure that your thoughts and your concerns are addressed as best as they can or we just have an open discussion on how to move forward together for those amendments um, there's a lot in there that is hard for me to understand it deals with like pitches of roofs and uh, utility lines and those kinds of things obviously we may not be able to um, change and now you know we'll have to get public works involved in that kind of stuff but the pitches and things like that if you feel like that's too stringent provide with some kind of um, alternate solution um, same thing with building materials any other uses that you're hoping that we can prohibit from that highway or maybe include in that highway overlay um, anything that you think and I think I provided that ordinance to you guys if you need it I can we can print it out after the meeting it's just a couple of pages um, but if we can maybe have an open discussion at the next PNZ meeting um, and just get the ball rolling that if, would be great if we want to submit some ideas should we talk to them in the meeting or mm -hmm. You can send them to me beforehand okay. if you want to. If you want a red line, um, there. So if you go to our actual ordinance, you can download the Word document, um, and you're able to kind of save it on your computer and mark it up. If you want to do it that way, that's fine. Or you can red line it with a pen and email it to me. Whatever works best for you. Maybe where I'm going is a little bit beyond the ordinance. I think it's a little bit bigger picture. But I, I really believe in that corridor. There are five very distinct lanes, right? Mm -hmm. And you've got a welcome to Texas from the north. You've got a welcome to Denison. You've got a through Denison. Mm -hmm. Then you've got a welcome to Denison from the south. Then you've got PMC. Mm -hmm. And I think all five of those have unique characteristics that the city really needs to take advantage of because the welcome to Texas is huge, right? You're greeting millions of visitors a year into Texas. But then you've got the choice, go left into town or stay on 75. What right. are we doing to get people into town? What, what does that look like? And I north and south. Exactly. I completely right. agree with you. And we, I, I really think we need five sections of that that yep. have different capabilities to allow DDI to get businesses into those sure. areas that, that suit the purpose of each of those sections. I mean, that was my quick view of that. Like sub guns. Yeah, sub yeah. guns. Mm -hmm. right. Because and they're very distinct. And the Welcome to Texas and the Come to Denison from north and south are huge. Right. 503 and 69, what are you doing in those corridors, right? Right. So I, that's well, kind of my goal. And another thing to think about, too, is if you have time in between now and the next meeting to drive that corridor, the topography is substantially different between 691 and FM 120 and then up to the river. It's just, it's different. And rem remember, there are pockets going north that are not in the city. Yeah. But whatever this overlay, whatever we come up with, we'll just overlay on top of that. And when they come in an annex and, uh, you know, zone, ultimately, then those standards will just fall onto that yeah. property. But you are... You are absolutely correct. Uh, Mary and I have had that conversation where, you know, maybe between certain thoroughfares, you have specific uses that are allowed. Or, and then as you move to a different zone, if that's what we want to call it, we can always flush that out through our conversations. But maybe there's other uses that are allowed that weren't allowed over well, here. It would go back to the plan, create uses that we would like to have there in the yep. master plan and, and have that there. And then we can have broader conversations. But to me, those are very valuable corridors. Yeah. Not many cities have the opportunity for a state welcome that's what you're from the north, probably your second busiest to 35, but mm -hmm. one of your more prominent entrances to Texas. Right. right. And we, we do have a good opportunity to catch it now, you yeah. know, we make that distinction, even though we have these for, especially to the north, you have that finite divider, the Red River or the lake. You have, you know, obviously, you know, you're not, you're in a whole new place. But 691, you drive over that, you can still feel like you haven't left Sherman or you haven't left Denison and you're going into Sherman either way. So in 120 can be the same way, yeah. going east and west. Exactly. So, yeah. Well, and it's, you know, we're, we peel off 503 or come down. Those are very distinct corridors mm -hmm. bringing people downtown, right? And yep. I think it's going to be interesting. Well, can I. Email, can you email that? Yeah. Uh, 
I can. I'll email it to you. If anybody else would like it, please just let me know. Yeah, okay. You also, okay. if there, you'd also spoke about, you said you had a map of already kind of what's there and how it's laid out today. I don't, I don't know if that was a misspeaking on Mary's end. We don't have a, we can create one. So we've done, um, we've conducted inventory for our other two overlays outside of the historic. We did Morton and we did Armstrong, and that's definitely something that we could do for this one as well. And once we start getting into maybe uh, potentially developing a committee to look at whatever our recommendations are, we, we could have that prepared. Because I know when we've approved stuff, and I think it's good for everyone to see what's already there, because uh -huh. I think down on Crawford, I think the, the pools came in and approved the mixed use. Oh, you, yes, sir. Okay. Then we've got yeah. uh, a mixed use approved up by Crawford High School mm -hmm. that's already approved. Mm -hmm. So there's, and then there's one, I think, just south of Morton on the, by the okay. church, another mixed use yep. approved. It'd be good to see those on there, the stuff that's already been approved and not built. And I'll, I'll try and work on that okay. and work on getting that taken those care of. Those three, I think, we've already approved this yes. year. Those three mixed yes. use areas. Yes. Okay. And there's, um, there's some other ones to be aware of that have historically been approved even prior to my time on the west side of <clears throat> 75 going southbound. Over there by IHOP, there's two parcels that were zoned PD to accommodate multifamily. So those are a couple other things to think about. Um, but we can add that to the map. And, and the one thing I think when we um, had the objections to the cement we're processing out here, mm -hmm. the gentleman that testified said he owns the land on the north uh, west corner of 75 and 84. Mm -hmm. And he was interested in putting data centers and other things there. And that'll be the 75, I guess, tollway interchange that's mm -hmm. coming in. It'd be good to understand that part as well. Because when you got the tollway dumping in as well, that's going to create a different use for the area, but also very busy. I mean, that's going to be a concrete jungle at some point. Right. No, I completely agree. And so. who knows what 84 is going to look like, right. especially with the development that's happening up on the lake. Yeah. And so we all we can take care of, and I think it goes 1,000 feet out. So we'll be mindful of that. And yeah. just from a staff perspective, I want, it to, I want you to know that we care about the land that's here. Yeah. I want it to look nice. And so keeping that in mind, with whatever uses we have there, whatever structure or architectural structures we allow there, the uses as well, that's ultimately what I want. I go to, <clears throat> excuse me, you go to these uh, places in Texas and you can definitely tell where someone was thoughtful and where someone is just trying, having to go back and mitigate mistakes that were made or uh, oversaturated their thoroughfare. So, but I think that we have, um, we're very lucky that we have all of you including our alternate commission members that really do care about what we what we are allowing here and how we allow it to develop. So I'm, I'm excited to start the process with you. Um, and who knows how many times we'll talk about it before we get a committee going. But it wasn't something that we're just like, here, you know, think about it and then we don't talk about it again. We do really want to take a look at this and this will hopefully uh, start for us to take a look at all of our thorough, or all of our overlays and maybe our thoroughfares in general. Do you do committees? Can commission members be on committees, or do they need to do other things? Too? I think it's going to. It, it, sometimes they're appointed by the mayor, um, so it may that may be what it boils down to. I I don't know. The ones that I have been a part of um, have been appointed by the mayor, um, but once we get there, it'll be kind of Mary will be talk with the city managers and determine what's the best. Uh, action when it comes to getting those committee members because we definitely want to make sure that the pool is vast broad. right and and broad yeah. so but we're i think we're still a little ahead of that um because right now we can talk but we don't have any actual ideas right, right? so uh if you guys don't mind doing that and i will send it to charlie uh robert and linda do you yes yeah, so i think you, you just send it to all yeah. of us that way we'll all have yeah. it in front of us i'll send it to you all individually as well as our just, alternate i can say yes yes sir Absolutely. And, uh, yes, sir. Do we have anything that shows what Highway 75 is going to look like after all the modifications? And I don't. I mean, that is definitely going it to is. change substantially, I think. I mean, we already sure. know we're losing some ramps, and, uh, you know, that may impact some of the decision making process. And I can, I'll try and get some of that information from Public Works. Um, I don't know if we have any ideas for any plans that for posted. anything further than what they are actually working on I right now. Kevcott posted some stuff for future that was eight to 10 years out. And also on the, uh, being through the North Texas Tollway Authority, okay. they yeah. actually have a mock-up of what they think the 
interchange we looked at is that's like 75. Helpful. And that's on the MPTAs. Okay. Because they're private, they move pretty quick. But they've got a they've got the four-door reading and they've already got how they feel that will work together in a two dimension. Right. Not a three dimension. I don't know how high those interchanges are gonna be. Sure. But uh, I, those are the documents that I have seen out there. Yeah. The text dot one was presented, I think, in one of the Sherman meetings talking about the thoroughfare for Sherman. Yeah. So that was about that was about eighteen months ago. And they're taking comments too right now, the uh, TxDOT is for their overall budget and what their plans are for the near future. So it may be a part of that as well. Um, but I will, I'll ask Anchin what information she has and what information we can share and then we can we can definitely yeah. take a look I'll at that. I'll try to find that NCTA doc. It's a yeah, public that'd be document. It's on the it's on the website under future thoroughfares. Sure. So. And just knowing that specifically when it comes to the construction of those thoroughfares, it could change. Yeah. And it could happen sooner or it could happen way later. So. And, and in fairness, that NTTA one will probably also impact any visions or thoughts for 120 up to 75 mm -hmm. because it will cross between Pottsboro and come north of 120 yes. behind those existing businesses and homes. Yes. And, we'll do the and even though our highway overlay um, only goes to a specific portion of FM 120, it's it's important, and I'm not at, I'm not saying let's expand the overlay by any means, but it's important to take into account what those areas look like. Right, right now it's pretty vacant yeah. outside of the south side and until you get to Pottsboro where there's actual residential structures. Mm -hmm. But what do we want that to look like if it comes into the city limits? You have Summit Oaks, and that's about it out there. Um, and then <laughs> east of town is pretty developed. It's also in a completely different CCN. Um, but that doesn't mean that we can't think about what we would like that to also look like. So, okay. thank you. I appreciate the conversation, and I will send that. I'll just send it to all of you, and I'll send you the Word document, um, and I'll send it to our alternates as well. And then, if you don't mind either emailing it to me beforehand or bringing it ready to discuss at the next meeting, that would be super helpful. Um, any other? What about the vape shop? Well, that's what I'm. That's oh. the next thing. I just wanted to make sure we put that puppy to bed before we move on to the next one. Okay. So Mary went to um, went before city council at their last meeting to ask for direction on basically an ordinance to either abolish vape and smoke shops or to require them uh, with a conditional use permit. Our ordinance is pretty silent on uh, vape shops and smoke shops they fall under retail. We do not have a use designated for either of these uh, operations and we, we don't have any definitions. We just, we just don't have anything. And so um, it was my understanding based off of council um, that I think we're going to move forward with the allowance with them for conditional use. Um, and then definitely um, create that definition as well as a use for them. It's very, it's very muddy. It takes a lot of, there's a lot of legalities that go into that with the state legislature that came through a couple of years ago. Um, a lot of staff work will have to go into notifying um, shop owners of the fact that they're, they're a legal non-conforming use if this gets approved and then once they shut down, they cease to, they, their, their operations cease, um, as well as the potential to have to mail out letters for everybody within that specific zoning district. So it's it's going to take a lot of um, work on our end, but that ordinance will come before you in the near future um, for your recommendation. Is that central as far as, I guess, CBD today or go to the eventuality that Texas goes the way of Oklahoma? Yeah. Right? That, I mean, is all that going to be included and considered as well? It will be defined. I don't know. So that was asked during the council meeting, and I, I don't know if we had a really good response for that. Um, it's not, obviously there's that chance, right? It's, there's that chance that that's going to be allowed, and obviously we'll have to amend our ordinances to accommodate that if it's allowed by state law. Um, but right now I think it will be just grouped in with all of this as allowed with the conditional use permit or prohibited anywhere. Because even today I think everyone's surprised with how far the CBD and I, I think that's kind of where this kind of started from, um, from a, a safety aspect um, for you know, their, how close they are to schools or how far away from you know in, children they are. And so that was something that kind of spurred this into 
um, existence. We, we took two ordinances from two different other municipalities or cities. One was uh, the city of Sugarland, where they completely banned them. And then the city of Lavon, which uh, allows them with a conditional use permit. So we've, Mary's done a lot of research on it, trying to make sure that we're doing what's best for our community. Um, but the direction that I, I believe she got from council was to for sure define it, to for sure make a use for it and set those parameters. And then um, I think we're gonna move forward with the conditional use permit. Yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure, uh, I don't even understand, but I'm not sure a lot of people understand the variant of Delta 9 versus legalized versus unlegalized. Sure. I, I, in my opinion, all that needs to be covered because it is a bit shocking when you walk into some of these places right. for about, you know, who you're selling here. But. Right, <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely have our, our legal team working hand in hand with us to make sure that however we define it is very definitive. It's very specific or as specific as it can be um, in legal terms. That way it doesn't, there's no interpretation from staff and there's no interpretation from um, the applicant as well, so. Would we be able to, um, or let me rephrase that. Would there be an opportunity to, as those discussions continue and unfold and, mm -hmm. and kind of morph and change, would it be something to where as a, as a voting, body that we could suggest, okay, well, maybe this particular type of retail, maybe that's not permitted in certain areas, but it would be in other areas depending on what those overlays are or those sure. sub-districts or, for instance, if, if, and this is just purely hypothetical, if it wasn't allowed within the downtown Main Street mm -hmm. corridor, something like that. Sure. So w would we be able to vote on something that was more specific for that type of we definitely could. Um, How many overlays do we have? We have four. We have okay. four. So Morton. We have downtown. We have Morton, Austin, the historic downtown, okay. and then Highway. Okay. And so I, that was something that was also mentioned during council, and I remember I wrote it down specifically saying, you know, not in the overlay districts, and and that could be, that could be something. Um, I I. Mary and I haven't had a whole, whole lot of opportunities to sit down and decide which direction we're going. she would like to go. Uh, police chief is also involved in this and which direction he would like to go. Um, and I don't know how soon this will come before you guys. There may be a whole another staff update to let you know what direction. I would assume this is a pointless task. <laughs> yeah, it, it, you just want to make sure that you're doing things appropriately, so. What are our guidelines for sexually oriented businesses right now? It has its whole own, it has its own section. Okay. Yeah. But it's pretty much isolated to a certain certain district, right? N not not necessarily. Um, they have to meet specific criteria that's within the that section for SOBs. Um, so it's it's very it's something that I still struggle to understand. I'll just be honest with all of you. It's, I've only been asked about that section once since I've been in this position, and I just directed them to, maybe you need to have your attorney take a look at this, and maybe yeah, our attorney can look at it. Very so. sticky. It is. I know we went through this when I was in Garment, and, mm -hmm. and it's something that we really need to rely on legal mm -hmm. uh, before we actually commit because Exactly. Stuff. Well, and we, there, there's a fine line between trying to do something that we feel is good for the community and an overreach. And um, we, I, I don't want to do anything like this. I don't want to, I don't want it to be a garage placement situation where we, we did it and we didn't think about what the aftermath was. And that's very minimal compared to what this would actually do. So I know that Mary is, she's working close with Julie's office to make sure that whatever we do present is as tight and as legal as we possibly can get. Um, but we'll definitely rely on our attorneys um, very heavily going through this. And well, we finally came down to, you have to allow them. Mm -hmm. There's no way around it. But you do have the choice of where you allow them. And I think that's, that's where we're gonna have the. I honestly um, think that's where we landed. It was, it, the direction was, um, it was a little, it wasn't muddy, it was definitely, yes, we need this, um, but which way to go outside of, and I keep hitting my microphone, I'm sorry, Karen. Um, 
outside of actually defining it and then providing um, a use for it. Um, so I'll be interested to know where we're actually moving forward. And I think we're leaning more to, towards the conditional use permit. So it is still allowed, but you have to meet whatever parameters we feel are necessary to meet those or to have that use. And also along the vape and smoke shop mm -hmm. um, potential ordinance topic from a day job commercial real estate standpoint, it's rampant. Mm -hmm. It's like every single retail development, it seems like somebody's wanting to open one of those and, right. you know, kind of along the same lines as, you know, liquor stores, CBD, sexually oriented businesses, you know, there's a, there's a place for those businesses and, you know, I think that's the general consensus here is that we just have to be very intentional right. about where they go right. and to be fair and, you know, to still allow businesses to generate income right. and, and revenue for our city, but to be responsible about how they're placed. Right. Well, we'll definitely, I mean, we've had something to think about when you talk about your overlay districts. Think about the, the historic shops that have been here, um, specifically for t tobacco. Mm -hmm. And we've had one in the historic overlay district for a while, and then we've had one move on to Morton Street for the same business. And you just want to make sure, and that's where the definition and the uses come into play. And just really being... Um, intentional with how tobacco is defined versus vape versus anything else because um, I think that's going to really determine what your use is and where you can go so it's no secret that the proliferation of vape smoke shops of all mm -hmm. sizes including ones that are barely bigger than a, a walk-in closet mm -hmm. are securing some sort of liberalization. Yeah. And if we don't, I mean, it is common in that in some way or form, but that's why they're all out there sure. and it's not a secret. Sure. And if we aren't aggressive about it now, we will have a whole lot more of them. And I mean, one can see that they're going out of business also pretty regularly. But that explains the proliferation and we all know that. Yeah, it's they're anticipating the legislation, yeah. Exactly. 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 Uh, but um, I'm hoping that in our next meeting, kind of the same update, we'll talk about the highway overlay um, with whatever recommendations or concerns or suggestions that you have come up with um, and our alternates have come up with. And then um, we'll also hopefully be able to expand a little bit more on the for sure direction we're going with this ordinance and if there's any concerns and suggestions that you may have. Um, if Mary were here, she may be able to expand a little bit more because I, I have been privy to the conversations that her and Chief Gudgel have had together. Um, but I, I do know that we're, this is going to come before you at some point, so. Okay. Okay, thank Anything you. Anything else? I appreciate y'all uh, listening to me. This was longer than the actual. Public hearings. Let's just get information. We need to be active on that. Pro, we need to be proactive. Okay. Okay. If being nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We stand adjourned at 1030.